Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Lawrence, and I'd like to demonstrate today the use of uh, neuromodulators, in this case specifically Botox, uh, plus uh, Restylin uh, Refine in the uh, treatment of perioral ridities, specifically of the upper and lower lip, as well as the action of the uh, depressor anguli oris. If I can just demonstrate, what I have done is just outline our plan of action. And as you can see, our patient today has relatively uh, loss of volume of the upper lip. Also, there are vertical ridities, as you can see, on the upper lip, also on the lower lip. And there's a pretty pronounced uh, pull down of the DAO. What I'm planning on doing is just using, uh, in this case, uh, uh, Botox, 2.5-unit uh, injection per the DAO on each side. My injection is about halfway between the commissure and the angle of the jaw. Uh, as, as you know, it's a pyramidal muscle. I believe that the closer you are to the insertion, the more effective it is because the muscle mass is less. So my injection point is about halfway versus being at the angle of the jaw. I think you get a more efficient and effective and long-lasting uh, effect of the neuromodulator. As far as injection of a toxin or neuromodulator to the lower lip, I typically use 1.25 units on each side, and it's a single point of injection, as demonstrated here. On the upper lip, I'll be using a combination of a filler as well as a neurotoxin. What I do is I mix five units of Botox per uh, 0 0.8 cc's of Restylane re uh, Refine, and it's mixed in one syringe. I'll be delivering it via a 27 gauge one inch cannula into that potential space between the, uh, in the junction between the cutaneous um, uh, mucosal junction uh, via a puncture site from the commissure. So really the total dose to the upper lip to relax the orbicularis uh, oris muscle is five units of Botox for the upper lip and two units of Botox to the lower lip plus 2.5 units of Botox per side for each DAO. And the face has been uh, cleansed. The first thing that I like to do is, uh, I typically, what I like to do and then what I start is, I start with the filler. And the reason for that is that if you volumize the area, or if you use a neurotoxin first, you can volumize the area just with the volume of the toxin, and then it becomes difficult to assess the effect of the filler. So I typically start with the filler first. I'm using a 27 gauge I can take my eye off of it. I'm not hurting you, am I? Uh-uh. The placement is in that potential space, as you can see. And it's a retrograde injection. I like the fact by combining the neurotoxin with the filler, you have an even distribution. Uh, I used to inject it with pinpoint injection, and I think by combining it with, uh, again, mixing it with the filler, you get a very even distribution. You can see a very simple injection, very quick injection. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So the next thing that I do 
is, as you can see, what we have done is using the 27 gauge cannula and using Restylane Refine in combination with the Botox uh, injection, total injection is 0.8 cc's into that potential space. And it does volumize the vermilion border and it also minimizes the vertical lines. But what I like to do is just to support as a buttress the main vertical lines in here on the right and on the left, especially on the left, you can see that there is a significant depression right here. And you can do it one of two ways. You can do it vertically into the line or you can do it horizontally. And again, because I've used the mixture and I've made that mixture, I have reduced the viscosity and the G prime of the product. So this is a very thin product. Uh, it's a very super, it can be a very superficial placement. And I use a 32 gauge needle, as you can see. And again, it's a retrograde injection. And utilizing the infraorbital block, you can see that the patient is absolutely comfortable. There's no discomfort whatsoever. These are aliquots that are infinitesimal almost. This is a, absolutely an intradermal placement. The angle that I'm approaching is about 15 degrees or so. Especially right here where there's this almost a depressed scar. I want to be very, very superficial. Again, you can do this vertically, you can do this horizontally, either way works, whatever you're more comfortable with. Just gentle massage when you finish. Gently open your mouth. Close it, please. And next, we'll just finish it off with the uh, with Botox. Uh, I do believe that I think it's important to combine, especially in the perioral area, it really is a combination of a neuromodulator to weaken the activity of the muscle and a volumizing agent. I don't think you can do one without the other. Uh, it's very rare that I only use a neuromodulator in the, in the uh, lip area. Uh, occasionally I do do that in young, very young patients. Uh, you can get a very ni nice, actually, e eversion of the upper lip if you use four or five units of a neuromodulator such as Botox or Xeomin in the upper lip where you can evert the upper lip just with four point injections. Again, I like this concept of spreading the uh, neuromodulator throughout the whole uh, act area of activity of the orbicularis by mixing it together with the filler. And lastly, what we will do is just to demonstrate injection of the lower lip and the depressor anguli oris, as I mentioned to you before, 2.5 units of, uh, in this case, Botox per DAO on each side, 
Marking is important. I mark the patient in the upright position. I have them animate. Obviously, you have to stay lateral to the commissure. If you're medial, it's possible to get the DLI and you will have oral incompetence, and that can happen. Uh, I like to inject about midway uh, between the commissure and the angle of the jaw to get a more uh, effi efficient activity of the modulator. And it's 2.5 units per side. I massage it laterally. Again, not to, turn your head a little bit towards me, please. Not to inactivate the DLI. The dilution of uh, Botox in this case is four cc's of saline per 100 units of uh, Botox. I like this particular dilution around the mouth. Uh, in the neck, I use a different dilution. I um, cut that dilution in half when I inject the platysma. And that's in a separate chapter of the book. Gently open your mouth, please. Lower lip, typically 1.25 units per side. And what I do is I just try to spread the material to get an even distribution throughout the auricularis, or it's on the lower one, lower lip. And essentially that's it. We see the, our patients typically at one week after the injection of the perioral area. Uh, we will take post-injection photographs and uh, follow the patients typically at uh, three to four months uh, for another injection if necessary. Thank you.